Hey guys, Wallace C here, and I'm joined by Benjamin Lin from Blitz Minis, uh, and we're going to be talking to him following the recent Worlds event, Geos, in Greece, where, of course, Ben was playing Wadroon, and um, famously, the 15 or 14 Raptors. Um, I'll let you just jump straight into it. Tell us about your time there. Tell us about Blitz Minis. Tell us about the Raptors. You can take it away. Uh... So Grau, he also was great. Uh, I was told by the Greeks that he also is how they pronounce it, uh, Silent Sea. Um, oh, what is it? Heos. Heos, yeah. Oh. Hios. Uh, uh, was really great. Uh, I think the Parabellum guys did a fantastic job. Um, because of all the distance, a yeah. lot of people flew in a couple of days early. Mm. So most of us arrived there Sunday. And then got onto the island Sunday afternoon to evening. Because it was midweek uh, that the games happened, right? Uh, it was it felt the, like that. Yeah, midweek. Yeah, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday. So most of us got in on Sunday, and then Monday was the opening, and yep. it was nothing serious. It was just food, barbecue prepared by uh, the CEO and founder Stavros himself. Uh, because he can't play games anymore, he has to find a new passion, and so oh. he found grilling. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's all, all, all really good. I, I mean, I've gone for other international tournaments like CanCon and stuff like that. And uh, what you get is you get a very competitive feeling because you just land, you know, you go to your Airbnb. Yeah. The first time you see your opponent is at the table. Yes. Right. Whereas yeah. for us, we had two days of getting to know each other, eating, humanizing, and, you know, you, very you don't see the opponent. Yeah, very different, mm. and and it was great. And the fact that you know the whole island was closed basically I mean you had to interact. <laughs> so let's just yeah. let's so just jump really into let's just jump into to the, the, I think oh. the main reason why why most people click on this and want to sort of hear from you. Mm. Um, we we all thought that your list was a meme list, um, and I, I just want to say um, for for those of you who don't know, um, I I played a game with your list last night. And um, oh. you might have seen it on my channel. I, I cre created a variation of your list. The, the difference for me is that I put the, the mantle on the Mounted Predator. I took three units of five Raptors. And I, I just tweaked a few other things. Still add two to Apex, etc. Et and my opponent, who's a, a friend that I play against all the time, played the exact same list that Carl played, that you played against him round one. Oh, yes. And okay. um, I, I, I thought it was just a very silly list. But surprisingly, um, I destroyed him after six rounds and he had no regiments left and I had all my regiments. And I'm, I'm thinking, what is going on here? Um, so tell us a bit more about why you decided to take such a strange like list with just Raptor Riders. So <clears throat> I think a couple of things. Um, first thing is that I won all my WCEs or I got all my points playing Spires. Ah. And uh, I also know the level of competition that we're going to get at Worlds. So I figured everyone would have already scouted out what I was going to do. Ah. And so that's why I decided, let's just go on a completely different skew. And yeah. I went full Raptors, excuse me. Um, and so I found that the Raptors were really good when I played them earlier. And then just before... Um, Kios, I think there was a little update where they gave us the hundreds. Yes, and they got cheaper. And then, yeah, and that that made the that made it just a, a shoe in. If nothing else, yeah. <laughs> I I, was... I saw that update and I started playing Thunder Riders and other different variations. I I never would have thought to have run pure Raptors, but when you think about it, I mean the the size of the unit physically is is so wide with liquid formation, and you can tilt it towards the opponent, and then on the supremacy turn you're getting plus two from famine, plus three from supremacy. It is sickening how far they far across they go. I I thought yeah. about maybe putting hunting pack in there, but hunting pack don't have flurry when you just go in through the front. Raptors do, so yeah. the the their ability to just kill something that is also worth three hundred points right off the back uh, really shocked me. And it allows you to dominate the early game. Yeah, if you get if you get two, uh, two char uh, tier two famine, and four raptors wide, you're looking at an average of twenty one to twenty three hits. Yeah, yeah, which is ridiculous. And yeah. I know the the criticism is that you know uh, you could die if three get taken out and you shatter, mm. but statistically they're looking at like between fifteen to sixteen hits to do that, and there are not a lot of light units that can do fifteen sixteen hits. Yeah. So that means that you're gonna last until until the heavy phase. Um, 
the the one thing which I did I thought didn't pay off was I actually put the skirmisher in the blooded, and that makes them march six, making it just nice right to get onto our objective eighteen inches in and six inches wide. Mm. Uh, but that didn't pay off as much as I thought it would mm. because the missions that we played, I think there was only one where it mattered. I quite like the tracker um, for the blooded. The, the if I flank. take the tracker, mm. oh, you mean the tracker for of you mean the other one, the one that gives Fiend Hunter and yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That that one's not bad too. Mm. Uh, if I took that fifteen points back, I would swap the mounted predator for a foot predator, and then give it brood of Omgoro, and that would make it have flank as well. And oh, then that's that would cool. Be three, and then there will be three in auto, and then just two rolling. Yeah, which I didn't would think be of that. Quite expensive, but it, it it works now that you mention it. And the mounted predator has mm. one less attack than the than the the foot one for some reason. <laughs> but I, yeah. think I think they're going to change that in the next. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that. Um, I think one one thing that people don't really realize about a tournament like like Heos, I should say, is that when when you look at a like an average twelve player event from just a specific country, seventy percent of the players there might be very casual, not really very um, very competitive in terms of list building. But at the event that you've been to there, everybody is good. Everybody sort of knows what they're doing. So uh, I was just wondering if you could sort of tell me about the, like the level of competence you, you face and maybe do you want to give us like a one to two minute um, like bat rep of each of your games? Uh, okay, yeah, sure. I think I think the most casual player we had there was uh, Rolo. You might know him from the yeah. Discord. Yeah. And uh, he's probably the most casual, but he got in because of all his uh, TOing in the US and... He is casual, but the thing is that he knows all the rules inside out. Did you play him? <laughs> so, did you play against him? Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't. No. He, uh, there were three lists that I was scared of. Uh, he was one of them. The Duagom list looked really. Yeah. Uh, he had that block of Balliste, and that's a trap. Like, yeah, I, I, I think I in, the the Raptors do badly against high defense. Like um, even the Fireforge defense for uh, they shrug off quite a lot of those those hits that you talked about. Yeah, mm. yeah, and and. Dragon being another faction with five wounds each make it uh, particularly hard to go through. Yeah. So when I was uh, clearing it out in my head, uh, I would have needed to flank charge the um, Hellbringer and kill at least one of them. Mm. And I can't I can't trade two for one. I need to trade one for one. So yeah. and the positioning it, it could easily mess that up. Yeah, yeah easily, easily. So um, to give you a brief idea of the competition, I think Carl is the US number one or number two. So really, really good player. Uh, when I heard his name coming out first, I was like, "Oh shit!" Um, I thought that would be an easy like... win for Carl, given like his experience and his list is very good. But no, you you somehow managed to do it. He said that um, he failed all of his reinforcement rolls to to stop you in, in about turn turn two three. Yeah, so turn three, he made his Centaur Avatara come on auto, and then he rolled for the three, which was the two Leo nine and one Vanguard, and he failed all three of them. Right. Um, which is actually the other reason I didn't bring Spires. Mm. And I, I told I told Carl this before the game started. I said, you know, I wanted to bring Spires, but if you screw up your reinforcement rules, you lose. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, that's you know, that's that's part of the game. And then he he proceeded to do that. And I was like, that's really really unlucky, because Carl Carl is a real master of Spires. I learned quite a bit from him, um, watching him play and how he plays the Biomancer. Because in, in Singapore, the different metas, when they meet at these tournaments, it's really interesting because yeah. um, Conquest is still a fairly young game and the metas change every three months. So it's very interesting. Well, the latest watch. one has been about six months, but I, 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 I agree with your point. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, they're going to come up with another one very yeah, soon, right? I think absolutely. It, so. We need it. <laughs> We yeah. need it. Um, uh, hey, so... the game against Kyle, sorry to interrupt you, did that go like all the way to turn 10 or did it end early? What was the late game uh, for that like? Late game was I think he finally got through uh he finally got through the uh the two apexes. He managed to jump one apex. He started to finally win, but how my list works is if by turn six you're not breaking through, then I've already won. I need to hold from two to six. Yeah. And uh he abandoned the left side objective. It's I don't know if you have the map out. Um there's a there's a uh, mission where there's one one center objective and then two, which you can only take the further one. Oh, that's called Divide and Conquer. Yes, yeah. so Divide and Conquer. Yeah. So uh, I captured the second one from turn two to turn ten. So, right. Or turn, turn three to turn ten, so that's 24 points. Mm. 
plus kill points. I remember ending up at like 50, I think, and then he was like 42. But he killed off everything except the unit that was left on the objective. Mm. Uh, but he just couldn't capture that point um, long enough. And I think that, that was how, how the game went. It went all the way yeah. to turn 10. If you if you had to play a rematch against him tomorrow, do you think you'd still be able to achieve the same result? Or was it more likely that he was going to win if he had actually just passed some of those roles? Uh, if he had passed uh, two of those roles, I think it would be a toss-up. One, I think it wouldn't have changed, and three, I think he would have won. Okay. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's hard because the Leo 9... The good thing about the Leo 9 is I ignore the armor piercing too because of all evasion. Yeah, so oh, the, I, I noticed of... that when I played them. That's really, really, really helpful. Um, yeah. There's quite a lot you can get away with. And it's, um, I saw that you took uh, units of four, which does make them a bit vulnerable to being broken, shattered. But with the evasion, you can shrug off. And it's, it's quite a lot of wounds you've got to chop through to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. What uh, about... The reason I do that is they need to be able to do 18 hits to kill legionaries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, let's just jump to the second game. Who did you play in round two? Round two, talking about legionaries, I faced Steve, mm. also from the US, uh, old Dominion player, uh, had a big block uh, of Praetorians and two units of Bone Golems. Uh, so a couple of things that missed me. I don't know how many of you have been playing, but I've been playing since 2018, uh, 2019 when it first came out. So... There was one point where they said the same unit cannot capture two points. And I think that's recently been... Oh, I, I I've encountered that a few different times, and there are two different camps about it. They need to clarify it a bit more, but the I think the official consensus is that you are allowed to score two different zones with the yeah. same unit. And if you're five wide, bone golems can swing around and do that. Uh, so it wasn't the bone golems doing it. It Praetorians? was the Praetorian. Mm. And, and I didn't... But I, I had early game control. So if yeah. I knew that, I would have taken double points for a long time yeah. before he broke through. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know that. So my blood was always only on one or the other. And uh, that, that, was, that was a bit painful. Yeah. But I think what really killed it was uh, there was a ruling on charging. Uh, so not a lot of people know this, and I, I don't know if you want me to go into it because it's going to be changed in the FAQ. So oh, it's just not a brief be summary if you want. Okay, so... Uh, if any of you have played fantasy, uh, what happens is you contact the enemy and then you close the door. Yeah. Now, closing the door is a very Warhammer term. Uh, in in the rules in Parabellum, what currently states is you pivot to close. But there is no such thing as a backward pivot Yes. in Parabellum. Yeah. So what happens is if you can't close the door because it's a backward pivot, then your enemy aligns to you. Yes which is a very, very weird interaction, and I don't think that's how most of the world plays it, including us in Singapore. Uh, but that was the ruling, and so what happened is I had Raptors in the front of the Praetorian, and I had Raptors behind, but because I because he's already engaged, uh, Leo ruled it that he couldn't close the door to me. Ah, uh, yes. So yep. I had to go into the flank. Yep. And once that happened, it blocked my Apex from going in the flank. Yeah. Yep. And Apex in the flank on in Praetorians would have wrecked quite a few stats. Uh, but it didn't happen. So that's one of the that's one of sort of the kill key skills of, of playing this game at the the high level is just sort of knowing what a lot of the, the rules calls are going to be in advance. And um, there are a lot of ways you can fail a charge when you are in a situation where your opponent can't close the door to you. And some players even take advantage of that with scenery and objective markers as well, where you deliberately put yourself in a position where they can't quite wrangle it. And um, yeah, it's just very useful, sort of know what's going to happen, you know, before you get there. Uh, but no, fair enough. Um, it sounds like um, I, I thought that old Dominion list was meta defining. I thought that's just like a, such a cheesy list, but you obviously had a chance of beating it despite that, which I, I find really impressive. So the Raptors actually hit both Bone Golems on their way in, and both times uh, the first rap the first Bone Golems died before doing anything. And then the second one, I think, got down to three. And then he ended up capturing two. Yep. But on your point, um, what Leo uh, Leandros did on the second, the opening day of the, to the, the first day, which is Monday, before game started, was he sat all 16 players down and he explained the charging rules. And then he also explained, like, okay, anything you guys want to bring up that you think is going to cause tension, bring it up now. And I will explain the rule to you. Yeah. 
so that the calling yeah. rules calls will be consistent and there'll be no like oh i didn't know yeah i think yeah. that's an awesome thing but, to do yeah so that brings us to game number three yes which uh my opponent uh unfortunately was not there for this um discussion with leandros because he came in oh. on the night okay? and then uh he, interesting he played, yeah but he played game one game two no problem but game three it was a wardron mirror now he also had slingers and hunters which um, which guy was i'm going to look at his list really quickly was it powell uh, or is it no no not not powell powell was the second it was uh alexander i believe Yes, the one with the blooded and war uh, uh, mantle yeah. of devotion. So okay. really, really Six strong blooded. list. But exactly, but he yeah. knows that he has to stay away because because he gave the mantle to the uh, the chieftain, he couldn't give it to the predator, mm -hmm. and that meant that I was going to outrange him on every shot. Ah, uh, yep. So he needed to trade favorably for that. So the three lists that I was worried about was Pavels. Um, Ewan's uh, SK list and the Dwegom. Yeah, these were the three, uh, and this one wasn't one of them simply because I knew I outranged him. Mm. So what happened was um, the Polish players are very, very mathematical, very technical players, and so they were they they were doing all this math in their head. But I think maybe uh, the the other thing is that they allow you to drink beer at the tournament, and I think I think maybe he drank a few. <laughs> Uh... So, so, so basically, he he was he was calculating my threat range of the uh, slingers with my predator at six six plus eighteen, which okay. is much much plus eighteen. Yep. Uh, he forgot that when I chant, it is with conquest, and with therefore nine. it's nine yep. six. Yeah, and so that's where he thought. Uh, he, I mean, there was a point at which he was like counting it. He was like. 6, 6 plus 6 plus 18, that's your max threat range, so it should only be 36. And I was like, no, because he's 38 inches away. And I was like, no, it's it's 6, 6, 9 plus 18, and that's 39. And that's why he was like, oh. And once he did that, um, his whole slinger unit died in, I think, a turn. Yeah. So he went down from like four stands to one. And uh, once that happened, uh, he had already clustered his entire army into a corner, and it was hard for him to break out of that. Right. So you actually and won uh, that game? Yes, I won that game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was two, one, and then your fourth game. My fourth game was against uh, Dusty, uh, who is an American player playing uh, City States. Uh, very, very competent, and uh, one of the lists that I practice against because um, I know that the City States expert scout list is the one that can really mess up my own formation because they hit harder and uh, they've got all the stack stuff that can so what what i really do is um you've tried that list but i think you broke up the four units into three units of the raptors right? you were saying, yeah the raptors yeah yeah so the reason i bring four is that i want dominance of the cards on turn two and mm. i want to go second yeah that's important and if i go if i go second on turn two and i get the last few cards it might mean that i could put two raptors into position to flank charge something yeah and then you just pick whichever raptor card is is going to work in the following turn exactly yeah and um and and normally i'll be 16 inches 16 to 17 inches away so you couldn't do anything even if you went first yeah right That's cool. um but but in this case i couldn't because uh, it's it's an expert scout list right yeah. and then they can also stack they can do all kinds of things to delay the turn to make sure that they can they can see you to the last ah, uh, card. that is actually quite uh, a useful so, counter yeah yeah, so so I, I knew that city states was a problem, uh, but you know, like you said, if I jump somebody with you know twenty one to twenty three hits, even even a a Yama would go down pretty fast. Uh, you'd be at least broken if mm. not shattered. Uh, on D three, you're gonna take you're gonna take a ton of hits. Yeah. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, but the mission was Maelstrom, and that gave him a huge advantage, uh, yeah. because. All his units can score on turn one. Yes. So he brought the lost standard of Horatio and then just jumped on the center objective. Makes it harder it for you two. to pull ahead in the mid game. When yes. Scoring yes. that so, quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It puts me entirely behind. And mm. so uh, he also had three chariots. Uh, we managed to 
get it to a draw. And I think that's quite common in Maelstrom because there are no secondary objectives. It's only objective points. No Warlord kill, no unit kill. And so that that, that put us into a late game turn 7. Um, his Talos was still holding the center, trying to hold me off. But he realized quite quickly I was going to get through it and the two chariots. So what he did was he pulled his entire Ayama force that was holding one side of the objective to the end of that objective. And then I could only contest him uh, turn 7, 8, 9, 10. Mm. And, and then that somehow got us to a weird situation where we were both sitting at 13 points. Interesting. So a very close game, actually. When you put very, it like very that. close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he got lucky uh, one of those rolls, which was uh, chariots into my blooded. He hit all eight. And I remember he hit all eight and he had four ones. So he did 12 hits with the chariot <laughs> into my blooded with ones rerolling ones. And I was like, the whole unit died. Wow. So that, that was that was that was quite funny. If if I survived it, I I at least get a heal, I get to unbreak, you know, run away, whatever. Yeah. Mm. But the fact is that once you killed that list, I only have three scoring. So once he killed that blooded unit, I only had the two apexes. Yeah. And that that was why I couldn't I couldn't catch up. Yeah. Just thinking about um, the update that's going to be coming um, in October, and mm. it seems obvious to me that uh, Old Dominion will have a few changes. City States, Talos and Chariots, maybe a little bit there. Ashendorn, maybe a little bit of a change there they've talked about. Um, I know that the chance system for Wadroon is changing a bit. I hope that we'll tone down Slingers a little bit. But do you think that the strategy that we're currently talking about, like Raptor Riders, that's just purely a matter of you know playing well and there's no ch changes needed to how aggressive they can be in the early game? Uh, I think the next rule set, uh, some of it was teased a little bit and some feedback was given. Um, I think that the all light list of the Wardroon would probably be in meta. Uh, so I think I think that's here to stay, but there are some changes to. I really don't know how much of this I'm allowed to say, but because uh, they didn't actually specify what is and isn't. But uh, I think there's some changes to things like uh, fluid, which uh, might be yeah. coming up. Yeah. So maybe like you can't 180 and stuff like that. Mm. So uh, I don't think that's necessary for the Raptors to do what they do currently. Yeah. Uh, so Raptors would still be a pretty strong choice. Um, however, one of the opponents, one of the vanguards from Poland actually brought up a very, very good rule. I think it was Susan who brought it up. Um, he said that, very simply put, you should put it into the main rule book that no unit can take more than three actions in a turn. That makes, that makes so, sense. Obviously, that affects uh, Wadroon and Sorcerer Kings, but there are other ways that you can... Um, help them out to to make that up. I, I I kind of agree with you. Um, having three three activations is something which, whenever it is available, players generally try to build around that and try to use it because it's just so strong. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It, it's really good. So I think I think that needs to change. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think I think the metas are going to change a fair bit. I don't think O O D. I think they've already said aura of death is going to change right yeah. to yeah. to to no more uh to to less. Or as, yeah. a, as a unit or something like that. Mm. And I think that's a good change, I think. Uh, but it is going to mean that they're more MSU. And and I think that that's 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 going to be have to be dealt with. I think that's actually mm. worse and more of an NPE than what it is currently. <laughs> it depends on we'll how see. they execute that. I agree. Like, we, we need to yeah. see it. Surely it can't be, uh, you know, it can't be worse to face Ultimate Minion than it is at the moment. But look, let's just see what they come up with. Um, I don't want to go t uh, too far into that. Um, yeah. Let's just take a little bit of time now to um, just go through some of these lists because um, I, um, I I put out this video before this event, uh, like dissing everybody's list. I know you watched that video, um, <laughs> but uh, where am I going to put this? I'll just put this over here. Okay, so uh, I've got the first one here from Alexander. Yeah, this is not. Oh, this is the guy that you played in round yes. three, and he took the um three activation um blooded which i thought was kind of cool uh do, do you think that's actually a good good style of list having like the chief since like the 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 big unit of bloods across the board i i think that it's a little bit weak in terms of counter assault like if you if you get attacked after going in there and they screen you 
that does badly. The, the rest of his list is great, but just that one choice. What's what are your thoughts on the the chieftain mantle conquest six six plotted? Uh, I think I didn't I didn't see doing it, but it is actually a really really strong choice, and that's because the blooded have a base of e one. So when they become conquest, they become e three. True. So yeah. So if let's say you've got a an apex, let's say not apex, let's say a, do- a fallen divinity. Yeah. You can just use these guys to jump in and hit the fallen divinity, and take the hit because it's going to be e three. Yeah. Right. So that that's that's a really strong play. Um, for him, he didn't get to use it because he was holding back um, from the one unit of slingers. Mm. I think uh, what happened with us is he had his conquest si- uh, chosen of conquest in front of this unit and then they blocked each other but if he had spread wide and just rushed me yeah. one guy would make it through I wouldn't be able to stop both yeah. and the moment you kill my raptors you win yeah. so yeah I think if he had been a bit more aggressive he would have won that Right. Um, so very strong list I like the two chosen of conquest I think two is too much I would have gone with one uh, but otherwise I think the list is pretty strong yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, based on that, let me just come back to this. How did he actually do? Um, eighth, eighth place. So that's not terribly surprising. Kind of mid pack. Um, there were some good things, some uh, some difficulties. The second list uh, on my radar here is Andrew, who played Hundred Kingdoms, and this was the guy who took the most Ash and Dawn um, altogether. He ended up coming ninth, I think. Um, and I know that yeah. you didn't play against him, but um, that list has some strengths and weaknesses. I think that the Ash and Dawn obviously are very expensive, and they they have a couple of bad matchups. They do have a bad a couple of bad matchups, and the problem is that they are uh, in every meta. Yeah, and so everyone knows how to deal with them. Mm-hmm. So that that is the main problem with Ash and Dawn. And if you get in early, he only has I think one unit of militia to yeah. fight you. So, so he's gonna get run over. Yeah. Um, but but uh, Andrew knows what he was doing, and I think he had a serious uh, uh, shot. Mm. So, I don't know how the meta is over there. Uh, but in the day one, when I think all the players were sitting around, the Polish came in, and again they were pretty uh, mathematical <laughs> and technical, and they said they said position one Ash and Dawn, position two Ash and Dawn. We're all playing for position three. Really? <laughs> and I was like, I was like. I've never I we've had Ash and Dawn win once in yeah. Asia and never again. So I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> if if you had had to play the Ash and Dawn list, would the strategy have generally been to, you know, try and clear out the other cav with your Raptors initially and then like shoot them with the slingers and hit the apex onto them? Is that sort of the idea? Uh I would hope to outscore them until about turn five. Yeah. And then I wouldn't I would be willing to trade two for two. Mm. Um uh, two rap. Oh, sorry, two for one, meaning two raptors for one Ash and Dawn, uh, because I need one to get rid of the blessed and one to clear them out. Oh yeah. Um, and and I think that would have probably worked. Right. Because I don't think he's got enough units to stop me, and by the time there are heavy units coming on, my slingers would be able to march, aim, and fire into mm. torrential, and you can't bless that. Absolutely, so. and it takes quite a while with four heavy units you're not going to bring them all on in turn three maybe not even turn four so they come in quite slowly um and when i saw photos of his games uh it looked like he'd really castled up into one sort of part of the board which restricts what he can do with scoring i suppose but anyway yeah but they like to dominate and then just push through which he which he did in a couple of them yeah yeah uh, next up, we've got Arcadius, who came seventh. He is the Exiliart guy. He's uh, one of the Polish players. Um, I was reading about him, and this is uh, kind of a list that he's played for a really long time. So he obviously is very uh, very used to it. And I thought it was a strong list. It's just that uh, I still do think the Stratagos is better. I think spellcasting Old Dominion is the best Old Dominion. But still, it had a lot of elements of, of, of what Old Dominion do best. Um, getting to, to tier 4, having the Archimandrite in there anyway. Did he have the Archimandrite? Right. I think there was uh, Creators. Let me just have a look at his list again. I think he had a Hero Deacon. Ah, uh, yeah. So Archimandrite and, oh, no, he has and the yeah. Hero Deacon and four Creators. And then there was the two units of four Varangians. And um, I know you didn't play against him, but he did uh, pretty well. Um, I thought he was going to be making the top three, but he didn't. Uh, he got to the top seven. But the, a lot of competition. Not everybody can get in uh, that high. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think... Mm. 
there, there was a there was a amount of luck as well, right? Yes. In, in these, in these absolutely uh, draw up. But I would say that this was one of the lists that I really wanted to play against. Okay. Um, I I, I didn't think the Varangians were going to be able, even with the the uh, supremacy, they wouldn't have been able to out out threat my yeah. uh, Raptors. Yeah. And my Raptors are E two, so you can be C four. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll take it. Yeah, I think yeah. that your your army does very well against anything that's defense three or lower because of the yeah. the weight of attacks. And you've even got the like the flint napper there to ignore hardened. Um, oh, I didn't bring the flint napper. Oh, you didn't bring it. Okay. No, I didn't bring it. Yeah. But I should have, but I, 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 I only had that one fifteen <laughs> points, and I used it on the on the tracker. No, fair enough. Okay, yeah. so that was Arcadius. Uh, who have I got next? Yeah. Um, so your list we've obviously already talked about, and uh, then is Chris. So Chris actually, I think, came last place with Sorcerer Kings. Um, I wasn't too surprised by that because Sorcerer Kings are a very difficult army to play, and he wasn't playing Jadu Kavak. He wasn't playing all of the like the ranged uh, brutes that he possibly could have. Um, and obviously yeah. it's a very, very competitive environment, and somebody's going to come last in a tournament like that. Even if you have 15 experts, you know, and, uh, one person's going to end up with four losses or three losses. No, actually, I think he won a single game. No, he no, he, he lost all four. So he's the one guy who lost all four of his matches. Yeah, because there's one guy who wins all four. There has to be one yeah. guy who loses all four. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think, I think important to note that these are kind of like the 16 best players in the world. Yeah. So, you know, 16th is not really... The worst thing in the world yeah. it's, i'm sure he it's, wins it's, tournaments back at home <laughs> yeah yeah no he does great in mm. the uk now to be fair to him chris isn't a sk player okay yeah so he was bringing this because he could easily fit this into uh the boxes that he brought yeah how do <laughs> Not you the best reason how do you transport yeah. so much conquest minis like on a plane I, that's that's the one challenge i've not managed to figure out uh very... so i did do i am i've done a video and i'm gonna post it soon on I think maybe ten or eleven of the players and how they all transported their, uh, yeah. their armies. Uh, what I think the French guy Killian brought his stuff in uh, biscuit tins, mm. and nothing broke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Along with his French biscuits, right? <laughs> all, all of his, uh, <laughs> his cooking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna go through some more of these. So uh, the Dwegum list we've already talked about. Um, mm -hmm. Where did he end up? He ended up twelfth. Fair enough. Obviously, there are still some difficult matchups for um, this. I, I had a practice game where I played um, uh, Powell's list, his, the, the, the guy who came second with Wadroon against um, another guy on TTS who was playing this exact uh, Dwegum list, and I lost very narrowly. So it has potential. Um, you lost the Dwegum list? I this lost one? just very close, close list, yeah. Um, I made a couple of mistakes. Like I didn't play Powell's list very well. Um, it's it's a bit of a different uh, style from what I'm used to. He had a lot of hunters in there and the predator and the predators slingers. And yeah. um, for for a long time, I'd been playing with a different variation like Thunder Riders and stuff like that. So I didn't right. quite make it work. But um, uh, I think I think it, Pavel's, that favors Woodrow in that list. Pavel's list is what I would have brought if I didn't bring Raptors. Yeah. Which is two fanatics, but I wouldn't have brought hunters. I would have brought two units of slingers, both fanatic, and yep. then just decimate whatever is on the field. Yeah, yeah, I've tried that as well. It's it it, it has a lot of potential. Um, positioning mm. matters a lot. Um, Dustin, so this is the list I think that you played against. This was the city states <laughs> guy. So yep. he played with uh, three chariots, two units of Illinois. Yeah. Um, do you think two units of Selenoi is the right choice? Because that was one criticism I made. I felt like that was too many. Do you think it's uh, okay? I, I think it is too many, but I think he couldn't have gotten anything better for 113. Ah, uh, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, Agima are like 170, 180, something like that. Mm. So I don't think he could have gotten anything else. Yes. And the Selenoi did do some work. Okay. Because of loose formation, there's that in tendency that you don't want to trade against them yeah. for skirmishing. And he did yeah. get sixth place, so um, he obviously knows what he's doing there. Uh, then we have Ewan, who was playing Sorcerer Kings. Uh, Ewan managed to beat Rob uh, in the Australian qualifier, and he just seemed like a, a strong player. He made it to 10th, so he won two games, lost two games. But when I read about his list, I thought, oh, that's actually a very strong list. That seems very powerful. But yet, you know, the people he played against obviously knew what to do. And um, he only went two for two. So I think Ewan, Ewan is uh, 
at least what I would consider to be one of the best Sorcerer King thinkers and players. Yeah. Um, I see the way he plays and the way he thinks about things. Uh, they're very, very good. But I think um, maybe in this tournament, uh, he was here with his girlfriend Sharon, oh, yeah. uh, or partner, one or the other, and um, I think he was enjoying himself too much. So. <laughs> no, fair enough. Which, unfo- which unfortunately is an occupational hazard when you go to Greece. And yeah, you go to a, it's a different uh, environment. It's not like yeah, going down to your yeah. local sort of you know school hall and yeah. just playing playing a wargaming tournament. Yeah, yeah. He, he got very unlucky because I think in the first round, uh, he unfortunately forgot to do a three activation after a ritual. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was pretty big. That was yeah. pretty big, and I think I think that that's probably where it tilted a little bit. I really wanted to play him, mm. but we have uh, kept in touch, and I think uh, next time we have a tournament in Singapore, a big one, we'll try and drag him over. Oh, excellent! Yeah, um, yeah I, I having been to to so many wargaming tournaments in my life, I, I can definitely attest to the fact that it's so easy to make one bad dice roll or one uh, like forgetful decision that uh, really influences the entire uh, encounter, even after like a two hour game. Um, yeah. I also got Carl here. We've talked about Carl a fair bit. Um, Carl obviously made it to third place. He's he's a very good player. And there's nothing yeah. really that I have to comment about his list that hasn't already been said. Um, I knew that he'd be able to do well, well regardless of whether he played this list or a different one. So um, Killian was my other one here. Killian uh, played a kind of an all-rounder uh, 100 Kingdoms list with had, which had some infantry and some... Um, some Ash and Dawn. I just feel like um, 100 Kingdoms is a, is a very average place right now. He ended up coming ninth, two wins, two losses. He obviously knows what he's doing. Um, but I think it's just more of a meta thing, really, that there's not too much more you can get out of that list. Um, yeah, I think I think the 100 Kingdoms are in a tough spot where you, you know, you've got the I win button of yeah. Ash and Dawn and everything else just kind of pales in comparison. Mm, so hats off to Killian to bringing something a bit out of the box. Yeah. Um, I I I would also say that I think maybe Killian doesn't have um, the community in France is still kind of growing, mm. and he has a uh, he has legendary status amongst the Polish yes. because he didn't lose a single game in all the WCEs that he played. Yeah. So. <laughs> well. So maybe he didn't. He didn't have anything to test his theories against. Exactly. Like, um, if you see somebody win a tournament in France, I mean, and they play five games, many of those games were against people who, um, you know, don't practice as much, aren't as competitive. And then when you come to Hios, you've got to win four games, you know, against people who are very, very good and who know you and who have seen your lists on Discord and so on. Mm. Um, so there is that. Uh, Powell, we've talked about it. He came um, second, obviously, with Drun list, uh, four hunters, four slingers. I played it once. I think it's very, very strong. Um, but like you, I sort of agree that um, there's a question mark over the unit of hunters. Uh, they they are situationally good, but I just feel over four four tournament games, um, they're going to have some spots where they wouldn't have been as good as the second unit of slingers. Uh, but it's hard to know. He obviously, you know, somebody like that obviously plays very carefully and makes every decision with um, with a lot of thought behind it. But I'd be I'd be quite keen to talk to him about it. I, I, I think you should because I, mm. I don't I mean we were all having our own final games mm. and trying to get to third. Um so I don't know what happened there, but he if you look at that list against Matthias's list, which is the winning list, yeah. Uh I, I, I think this list comes out on top. I'm not sure how he lost. Well, um they, they were saying that it was extremely close and there was just one tiny oversight or tiny uh, one small dice roll that, that, that made the difference. So it's it, that's why I, I feel a bit uncomfortable when I read and hear about people saying, Oh, this list is better than that list, um, from a tournament result. Tournament tournament results are a measurement of players' ability, but also of a lot of small factors that happen over a weekend, like small dice rolls, small situational things, your luck of being against this person rather than that person, or time constraints, and 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 and, and this game didn't finish. So yeah. um, it's it's just really hard to sort of make that judgment. Um, yeah. Speaking of Mateus, uh, let's have a quick look here. So he took. Uh, it was Mateus, wasn't it? Yeah. So he took yes. the six hoplites, although there is a cow in there, one Selenoi, Talos, Ooh, Chariots, Talia. Polymark. Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, the, the Minotaur Hespis was the only thing that I questioned in my um, in my preview video. But again, um, they they do score very well because they come in very, very fast. 
and mm. they're kind of tough and they might be the best thing to slot in when you've got that many points left over in my experience in seeing them in, in games um i i just find that they fold very very easily and they don't inflict a lot of damage just from my experience but it's not really good to make a judgment based on pure anecdotal evidence if you know what i'm saying mm, mm, no. Mm. yeah no i think i think his list is strong um but i i just don't see how he had the tools to take out pavel's list mm. um you know the, i i i don't see how that happened yeah. i mean obviously it did but <laughs> I, I i i look at it i'm like uh, when I saw those two as a matchup, I was like, okay, Pavel's going to get first punch. There, there, yeah. There's almost no way for uh, Matthias to stop it. So yeah. I don't know what that miscalculation was. I also saw the same folks that you saw, right? I think they said it on... on well, the, uh, one on criticism the... that people were making of PB staff is that they really could have taken a few more photos of the position for those those games that everybody was interested in following and included a bit of a write-up about what happened. There's not, there was nothing stopping them, and I think a lot of people would have found that really, really interesting. I mean, they don't have to be intrusive to, like, get your phone in your face and take a video of what's going on, but a guy from the sidelines could just make a few notes and post it after the game so that it doesn't disrupt anything. I really felt like they could have done that uh yeah i think i think we did and i think uh so this is the, we got to remember this is the first time they're doing this yeah right yeah. so uh they they did the interviews after i don't know if they posted those i think they some did. of them yeah uh yeah so i i think they're trying very hard but we have to remember heos is not set up with the infrastructure to handle this mm. uh, when i say this i mean even the restaurants were not so oh, okay. there, there, there were times when there were 12 people and we had to wait two hours for food oh, wow. because they're just like, okay. they're like, you know, normally it's, you know, <laughs> the couple, couple from down the street come down and, uh, yeah. you yeah. know, and, 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 and so, uh, they are looking into it and the infrastructure, uh, is only around the city of, I'm going to butcher the name, so I'm not going to say it, but in the Southern part of Hios and we're in the North Eastern part of Hios. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's very bad Wi-Fi, but. Stavros has said that in the future, definitely we're going to look into getting better infrastructure here just to ensure that... Um, sure. Uh, but I mean, like, like I'm it. saying, it, it doesn't have to be like a filmed top-down game with live commentary. A lot of people would like that, but all I'm saying is I felt like they could have made a few more notes about sort of uh, where the units were and taken a, like a photo after a return. But that was just my thought. We'll move on from that. Um, I've just got a few more here. Yeah. So the Nords guy, that's Peter. Um, he apparently didn't do very well. Uh, I remember reading a comment by Carl that uh, the Nords kind of struggle against Wegham and, and Wadroon and that kind of shooting sort of meta and he wasn't able to make it work. I thought that the Nords list looked very powerful. I've played against a similar version of it and I find the Nords very, very strong for scoring early game. Uh, they are very, very strong and yeah. the Yao supremacy is really good. The way Peter pilots it is also fairly good. I think mm -hmm. uh, what happened was he got very unlucky with, uh, I think he played Reese. Oh yeah, and I think they were having a real go at it, and I think Reese got ridiculously lucky. I think he did something like eight, eighteen or something, like twenty-five hits with his hoplites, and he just went right through a troll unit. Wow! <laughs> Whenever I attack the trolls, I just leave them with two stands, and they're not broken, and the second stand's got one wound left. That's just my <laughs> my anecdotal sort of experience of that. But yeah, uh, they 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 can get unlucky. Like on paper, trolls aren't really the strongest unit but in practice because of the Yarl supremacy ability they're extremely yes. fearsome and um well yeah. worth the points so i was yeah I, I thought that he would do quite well but yeah it, it can be matchup dependent and luck dependent I as you it's... mentioned <laughs> did, 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 did they say what the first matchup was for peter uh i mean i could go back and find it i can't quite remember i mean here i here. i think the feed. let me just scroll up i've got it yeah. right here yeah uh, i'd have to go a fair bit away uh, da, 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 da. They did post quite a few pics. Uh, the live feed. Oh, here we go. Last round. Uh, that's the last round. round. And here's the first round. Okay, so he played against. Peter, 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 Peter. Oh, he played against Powell. <laughs> so he was up against the 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 yeah, um, no, hunters, that, slingers. That, that... So yeah, you're gonna you, you so what you're trying to do there is out out shoot the bow chosen. Um, yeah, but with easy. Fnatic, it's... Bow chosen enough. Yeah, Bow chosen yeah. is what, 14? Yeah, yeah so they move six, gonna... shoots 14, but um, yeah, the, the the Predators can can pick that apart yeah. pretty easily. 
By the way, um, yeah. here's a question for you as a Wadroon player. Do you prefer um, Animalistic to ignore the forest, or do you prefer Ceaseless uh, to get the Fire in Advance? I take Animalistic to be very sure that there is no way to escape me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like that. Yeah. Urgh. Yeah. Uh, I'm a ceaseless guy myself, uh, just because um, I find myself situationally in positions where um, I can play around the forest a little bit. Um, my predator might be able to get to the forest, and I just want to be able to out threat things and try and stay away from certain things charging me, like um, uh, Strix. Uh, but I haven't really tried the other approach as much, so it might be worth giving it a go. But I, I can definitely understand both both arguments. To me, it's pretty close um, the, call. The reason... I think it is close. I don't think it is an obvious answer. But uh, for us, especially because we were going into a situation where they did say that uh, terrain will be on objectives. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And that's so that's why... Factor. I uh, Yeah, so we, we have always played it by the rule book, which said that there shouldn't be terrain on objectives. Mm. But I think a lot of people who are whining about uh, Ash and Dawn say that if there's no terrain objectives then ash and dawn always just win uh that's not our experience <laughs> yeah, but i disagree but, with that yeah but, yeah but some people said that and so that's why i think they said they did send us an email just before the event to say that uh terrain will be on objectives and okay. so um i said okay then definitely i'm taking animalistic because I, I don't know how the terrain how mm. heavy it's going to be so better than just yeah you don't, you don't want to be in a situation where there's a massive forest in the middle line of the table and your opponent <laughs> is using that to try and um, you know mitigate your your slingers. No, I can definitely understand yeah. what you mean by and by especially that as, especially when it's when it's my only shot to kill Ash and Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Um, just quickly going to mention Raymond Tan. Uh, he also played Wadroon, and Raymond yep. uh, had a very interesting style, which I questioned personally. He took a lot of um, uh, so he took some really big blocks. So he took uh, some massive infantry, and he had a lot of lights to score there, and he came 11th. And that's not too surprising to me, because I just thought the, his list was problematic in the sense that um, if he doesn't actually get uh, a lot of scoring stuff at the end. Am I looking at the, at the right list, though? Let me have a look yes, here. Yes, that's the right yeah. list. That's the right list. Yeah, uh, eight braves. One -ton tour. Yeah, one so, ton so tour. His... Yeah. Yeah, the, the problem with his list is always that it it only has three scoring yes which is the same which is the same criticism of my list yeah uh granted but, but your list is a bit more proactive one... yes yeah. yes so his his is a bit more of a uh walk up to you and then uh you know it's a problem it's one of those lists it's a bit like old dominion where they mm. put the problem in front of you and if you can solve it then you win yeah right if you can't then you know you're just gonna get murdered um so I think uh, the game one, I think they timed out, which is pretty unlucky. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think he would have had that game if he had time to go through it. I think they only ended at twenty four or five. Yeah. Something like that. If yeah. you're playing a scenario like Echelon, where there's one uh, objective on your side to put one block of brave labor, is it braves there, and then there when you send your other block of braves over to that side, uh, I can understand mm -hmm. the strategy. But if you're playing a, a scenario like Decline Flank, where your opponent goes, okay, that scoring unit doesn't count for that one, you've got to put two other scoring units on these two other objectives, that makes it a bit more of a struggle for that kind of list. But um, he obviously would have seen the, the lineup of missions before he submitted his list, right? Yes, mm. yes. And I think he also knows that his, his unit is big enough to actually take two objectives. <laughs> right, and he would have remembered that. Right, okay. That's actually a point yeah. that I wasn't considering. So if you play Fall on Hope, yeah. you could uh, spread yeah. your Braves across your both of your home zones. That puts yeah, that in perspective if, a lot more. I didn't think of that. And if you if you put the... Uh, I, I, I don't know if you've tried, but the Matriarch Queen with Mando Devoted War makes them Ash and Dawn. Oh, yeah, I've, I, play, I play that all the time. Yeah, I, and oh, I, I, I only take five <laughs> Braves um, with the with beads, yeah. with, with Indomitable and Tenacious. I found that five Braves almost always just survives. And if they do kill them, I've just spent so many points elsewhere in the list that I don't really care. But I agree with you. They're, they're incredibly tough. They, they probably need to be yeah. nerfed a little bit there. And I think they will change it with Fnatic um, being moved. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it will. Uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of the shenanigans that we shouldn't be doing right now, I think are going to be taken away. Yeah, 
yeah, agreed. Which is a good thing. But I, I, I still hope they, they, they keep the faction fun. Like, I was very happy when they put Mantle of the Devoted back onto Cavalry because, you know, even if you're, you're, you're Raptor Riders with Mantle or your Thunder Riders with Mantle isn't necessarily the strongest thing you could do, it does give you a bit more of an entertaining way of playing the faction, and I, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> um, when they just brought it down to infantry only, I thought that was just a bit, m- bit more of a, like a, a hyper nerf. But anyway, yes. the, the, the chance are changing, so we'll see what they do. Um, lastly, yeah. I've got Reese, who obviously is from Australia. He is uh, you know, technically a PB employee. Um, I didn't like his list that much because I thought it had too many hoplites. He did uh, come 14th. Did you speak to him much about his strategy and in, in, in his games? Uh, I think Reese is a fun-loving guy. I I yeah. get the I get the feeling I get the feeling that uh, he wasn't there to win. Same. So I think he was yeah. there to chill yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, and that's not the knock against his competitiveness. Oh, I think definitely he not. He has yeah. a competitive side. Yeah. But you know, I mean, also like you know, sometimes I play tournaments in my own shop. You know, sometimes people don't like it when you win your own tournaments. So I, I could understand why Reese also, you know, if for some reason <laughs> he was on the final table. Oh, that would be like, have been embarrassing. Yeah, that's a yeah, really good point. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't think he did. I don't think he was told to do it. But I yeah. think, you know, just out of common sense, like you shouldn't, shouldn't go and run over all the other players and be like, ha ah. <laughs> Yeah, that would be hilarious, though. Like your one employee in the event just steam the rolls everybody. It's like, ah, you noobs. That will be hilarious. I, I will say this, that on top of the fact that all 16 players are really, really good, a lot of them are actually part of the playtest or the, the, the yeah. Vanguard group. And so really, really hats off to them for being able to dissect the, the six different versions of the rules that they have in their head. Yeah. Right and yeah. and and remember the one that we're playing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Yeah, but that's amazing. No, I um I have a lot of respect for them, man. Um, yeah. we're coming up to an hour, so we'll probably wrap things up in a second. Do you um want to make any last comments about the event or about your YouTube or about your scene in Singapore? Or anything you want to sort of say to just cap off the the talk? Uh yeah, so we have a, a channel called Blitz Minis. Uh, mm-hmm. we've been doing we've been doing Conquest forever. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got thirty six bat reps on it now. Nice. Um, we we try and keep it up to date, but you know it, the rules change every once in a while, mm-hmm. so that's good. Um, we do have quite a few WCEs coming up, and we're gonna try and make sure that we qualify at least one or two people for next year's tournament. Yeah. I hope to go again, but if somebody else can beat me, then by all means, let's do that. Great. But uh, Kiosk is definitely um one of the events that you want to try for so if you have mm. wces in your own region try your best to get there uh, i will say this that it is unlike any of the other international tournaments i've gone for a and b the pb staff are really really amazing i've dealt with a lot of lead designers in my time and none of them are as humble or as uh, attentive as leanne drops and his team great so definitely something feedback. Over there, yeah, and the fact that oh, one more thing is Hios is chosen because it's the founder's hometown. Ah, uh, that's why he is chosen. Yeah, yeah. So cool. he's sharing his slice of the world with us. Yeah. yeah. And with your Singapore scene, how many people show up to to events? Because Singapore is not that far away. I might be able to, to swing by. Uh, I think the highest we've ever gone is twenty four. Um, <laughs> okay, that's but... a lot more than like we get around here. So. Well, I yeah. mean, New Zealand is kind of in the corner of the world. Oh, but I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, it, it, like 40K, Age of Sigma, other other events, there's massive turnouts for, for those, as you as expect. Oh, right. Yeah, so like, we have a very big yeah. wargaming culture. It's just the conquest is, 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 is just getting off the ground here. We have maybe four active players, four to eight, you know, kind of thing in, in my town. But yeah, um, whereabouts where are you? Are you in Christchurch? No, Auckland, Auckland New Zealand. We have we have some in Wellington oh. and Christchurch. But look, I mean, I over the last uh, twenty years, twenty thirty years, I've played you know forty k and Warhammer and, and War Machine and, and Infinity, obviously, and we we have had those scenes go up to a, a large number of players. But Con- Conquest is quite a difficult game to get into because the, the miniatures are quite expensive; they take quite a long to assemble and paint, and um, there is that little hurdle. But I think it's a very, very good, good war game and and very suitable for tournaments, especially if they keep patching it. Yes, mm. yes. I think I think uh, try and come over to us. Although I know it's like a thirteen hour flight or eleven hour <laughs> flight. I, I I bring my daughter there once, but it, yeah. It, yeah. So it's it's a long flight. But I'll yeah, bring my, I'll, try, bring try my I'll bring my biscuit tins, put the minis in there, and we'll see if they can oh. survive the trip. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. All right, man. Well, um, thank you very much for sitting down with me and having this chat. I'll post it up on YouTube and um, we'll stay in touch, man. Catch you later. Okay. Thanks. See you. See ya.